Let us now formally move to session three of the conference. Session three is on climate change, equity, and community resilience. Dr. Emma Porio, APSA President and Professor of Sociology from the Atenea de Manila University in the Philippines, will moderate the session together with Dr. Shayan Vadanaputi, Director of the Regional Center for Social Science and Sustainable Development and Faculty of Social Sciences at Chiang Mai University, Thailand. May I now hand over the floor to Dr. Emma and Dr. Shayan. Is, doc, is Dr. Chayan in now? Uh, Joy, can you spotlight on him, please? Uh, okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the third session of the 16th APSA conference on climate equity and community resilience. Yesterday, we had an excellent discussion of COVID pandemic, health and inequality, and the historical structural ramifications of our concepts, methods, and applications to the conditions of inequity and equality in our time. It is great exchange of ideas from North America, from South Asia, from Southeast Asia, and Pacific Asia. So this morning, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Professor Chayan of Chiang Mai. And um, Joy, do we have um, Professor Suri Chai? Professor Suri Chai is now in Paris attending the session on the Commission on Southeast Asia. So uh, can you spotlight him if he's in this room? Uh, they're both not yet here. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so I would like to say that we are fortunate uh, to have the support of the you know, social scientists from the Asia Pacific region. So, for example, um, Professor Dang An, uh, president of the Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences, emailed me this morning and said, you know, or he, he also emailed me several uh, days ago that, you know, he would have preferred to comment on the first set. And I said to him, I, my aim really is just to highlight. Uh, the work of climate change of the Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences, because I know they have done that. And also that's the same for the other people in the panel. So for example, um, we have our, our panel, um, you know, economist Maria, um, from Acatenio de Manila, Ma, Ma, Mahalia Ravago, and Gay de Fiesta from the University of the Philippines. And then we have, um, a presentation also from the Women's Alliance of Climate Change of Lower Northern Thailand, and also from Climate Watch Thailand is, and all those, also the Asia Climate Change um, Conserva Con Con Conserva Consortium. Uh, we also have, you know, the panelists. We have the, uh, Professor Dang An, and we have Professor Brooke Wilson from La Trobe University. And I hope, you know, Koichi Hasegawa will show up today. He is my colleague at the ISA on Environment and Society. And then most of all, I'd like to thank, you know, Antonia Yolo Lezaga, the president of the National Resilience Council and my co-investigator, along with Jessica Brasilia in the coastal cities at risk. So um, I would like to, I mean, I would like to privilege the coastal cities at risk for, you know, the next three minutes because we are co-organizing this, so I would like to share a few. Uh, can you please allow me to share screen, Patty? Um, okay, so I would like to just show a few slides from our work. Uh, can you see it? Hello? Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can, Dr. Okay. Corio. Okay, so... Uh, the Coastal Cities at Risk in the Philippines, Investing in Climate and Disaster Resilience has been organizing uh, this web, APSA webinars uh, since last year. So um, I will just show to you um, that CICARPA is, is a consor first a consortium of Ateneo de Manila University and the Scientific Organization of Manila Observatory, which um, Tony Yolo used to be the executive director and the National Resilience Council the private sector partner with Tony is now president. It's also a consortium of cities that we're trying to make resilient. And you can see here, 
um, here the Naga City, the cli um, climate disaster risk assessment vis-a-vis uh, -vis flooding. And you can see here that uh, on the right, on the upper picture, we have Mayor Legacion with the president of Ateneo de Naga and with the Resilience Council and other scientists presenting their output to the local to the local government unit and to the private sector. Um, and then in the lower part, you have the map that basically I hope um, Dr. De Fiesta will show later, which basically um, looked at the levels of vulnerability of the different barangays and, and so um, really our aim is what I call institutionalizing the resilience agenda because most of our governments are really very re reactive, you know, uh, to typhoons, floods, and they, they just react. They don't really prepare and they do, but not systematically prepare and prevent, you know, the extreme event, you know, the how to respond more uh, proactively and systematically that people will be out of harm's way when, um, when a hazard comes in. Uh, so we do this through transfer action research, tools, partnerships, networks, and coalition. As you can see here, so we have the partnership in the National Resilience Council, uh, the national government, and then at the local, we have partnership with universities, local governments, and then at the regional and the global. So I would just want to, because as researchers, I really believe that we have to go transdisciplinary now. I always tell my uh, my staff that we have to embed transdisciplinarity, um, intersectionality, and systems thinking into our way of doing research. And uh, we basically um, subscribe to the three principles, the TDR principles of co-generation of knowledge with stakeholders, co-creation of capacities, the scientists and practitioners, co-ownership, and if you do that, you, you know, all the partners will uh, own and be benefited by it. And on your right hand, you can see here uh, the different levels of knowledge production and application that you have. I'll not go into detail because you know you'll have a copy of this. And also, I want to emphasize that we're, you know knowledge production should lead into application and innovations on the ground as well as you know conceptually and methodologically. I will. Um, I will not go into that, but basically we, we, as I said earlier, we're just as good as our science and our technology that should support decision-making and uh, it should support people on the ground and to appreciate you know, science, appreciate data and how it will make their decision-making more informed. So when we say risk-informed, resilience-driven planning and development investments, we will do all that. I also want to introduce um, Milani, was, um, whom you heard a while ago, was basically to asking me, what is the innovation that we are, you know, that we're having in the CICAR? And I said, we basically um, interrogate very well, incremental adaptation and transformational adaptation. So if you want to innovate, then there are two kinds. So when you say incremental adaptation, it really just, you know, make the system work a little bit more effectively. But when you say transformative reform in, uh, adaptation, it transforms the systems as well as its relationship with other systems. We also innovated in terms of looking at art as a strategic pathway for risk and resilience communication. Uh, I was really impressed with my artist colleagues when, I, when uh, Tony and I gave them the findings of the coastal cities at risk one, five years, and they just translated that into 20 panels of exhibits. And I was thinking to myself, what a very effective way. And that's why we emphasize um, what we say, we social scientists must produce actionable and translatable science to the level of our practitioners and professionals. We also, you know, we, we think that mobilizing gender and resilience and uh, Jessica Brasile and Gay Di Fiesta very, did this very well in Iloilo City. And then in Arete, which is the um, uh, artist hub of Ateneo, innovation hub of the Ateneo Vanilla, we promoted community resilience toolkit in terms of the community-based partners. 
We also created youth champions for resilience. And we also looked at gardens, you know, in the pandemic, we have food gardens and the fine arts faculty translated that with uh, their students in terms of looking at uh, gardens as a space for resistance and collaboration in a time of climate crisis. And so, and also the artistic director of uh, Arete, who is a sociologist as well, uh, he, translate, he summarized the findings of the coastal cities at risk into 10 minute video. And she also wrote a play and a drama called Asul, you know, which basically looks at the contradictions of growth and prosperity. Okay? So, um, and then I would like to basically conclude by saying, you know, this is our productions and you can see there all the, you know, if it takes a village to raise a child, it takes the whole society to produce and to collaborate and to improve our conditions. So uh, in the center here, you have the coastal, you know, you can get the link, the coastal cities at risk resilience toolkit for Philippine cities. I will not go into that, but you know, you can get the, Joy can put the, the link in the chat and you can uh, click on it. So in closing, I will just say, I like this. I gave this uh, closing also to the, deepening systems course in, uh, of the National Resilience Council. I like this African proverb, which says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, we must go and work together. Thank you very much. Um, can I now stop here? Um, with that, I would like to start the session. I'm very uh, thankful to, um, you know, to all our um, session presenters, um, Dr. C, Dr. Rabago, Dr. De Fiesta, and uh, Wapi Porn and Nonom uh, for, you know, um, participating in this conference. And then we have our reactors later, you know, I've introduced them. So 